So three seconds about to clip. What we're trying to do, um, the things you're going to see, imagine they're real, um, you know, like, like you guys, and we were just filming you. Now, the difference between you and, and the objects we're filming here is you have atoms and they don't, but the, everything else about them, if you just stripped atoms out of everything, they're emanating a light field, and as long as you're not touching it or smelling it or trying to taste it, it's neurologically true. So what we're trying to do is capture that. Um, if you were actually filming something, what's really weird is it moves in and around, the camera focus is following it, because it does exist um, in its sort of visual sense. But remember, what you're seeing is a film of the visual experience that you would have if you were engaged with And the truth is, we didn't magic. put much effort into it at all, because all we did was film what you see with Magic Leap. There's right. no special effects. There's no, no compositing, post. there's no post-production, there's no editing, right? So it's... But it uh, wasn't an easy thing, right, to sort no. of capture those images. But we, the, the goal was, how do we show people what it's like to wear Magic Leap and what you see and experience with Magic Leap? The, okay. the really interesting thing, and in, uh, we'll run in a second, yeah. is we can't on video actually give you the experience you have when you'll use our system because it's like being here and looking at all of you is different from actually seeing a video of you. So uh, there, there actually is not a replacement for the direct experience, um, but this will be pretty close. So can we take the lights down and show the video clip, please? Sure. So you'll see uh, Gimbal. He's a little robot from a project we're doing, and he's hiding under a desk. And uh, for all intents and purposes, he's there. And uh, he's also aware of you and interacts with the environment and can look you in the eyes. And this is an interesting, uh, just like a whole bunch of planets floating over a desk. They're reflecting light on the table. Um, the person is kind of unaware of the planets there. But uh, th it's like you had a solar system in your hand. So if you think about things like education, instead of reading about a textbook, like the entire universe just comes alive right there. So when I saw this for the first time, Roni, uh, particularly the gimbal, I thought, well, why is this different? than, let's say, the experience I've had in a 3D movie where the character seems to come and sit right in front of my face and I can almost reach out and it seems like I can go touch it. So why, why is that gimbal, how is that gimbal different? Right, so we, if we talk about gimbal, he's sort of like R2 steampunk, you know, ancestor or something. Um, if, if gimbal was in the room with us, uh, there's, no, there's no projector, there's no display you are experiencing like gimbal is really there. Um, you're just not smelling him, and if you try to put your hand through it, it's like there is no atom to push back. A 3D movie, there's a projection against a wall, and it's just flat. There's basically two flat images which cause this stereoscopic trick from the 1800s to happen. We're actually not doing a stereoscopic trick. We're, we're, if he existed, we reverse engineer what that signal would be, how it would enter your brain, and effectively, you experience Gimbal as, as a complete neurologic reality in the world with you, flying around, going behind things, gets sit on top of tables. Um, so so he's, he's really there.